So you ever listen to a song and think, the song's fine and all, but it could really use some more jazz harmony. This song's fine and all, but it could really use some more jazz harmony. Don't worry, we have all been there. So in this video, we're going to be counting down the seven levels of jazz harmony, starting from the most basic going to the most extreme. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to reharmonize a simple pop melody, Lizzo's Juice in D minor. This is what the original sounds like. Sounds pretty good to me, but even with that nice E flat over F in the second measure, that's not really jazz. This is what the jazz version would sound like. This is jazz harmony level one. Jazz harmony level one. Bell pepper. So this is a fairly typical jazz chord progression. We're not using the basic triads anymore, but we're using richer four note seventh chords, like the first chord, a D minor seven. The next chords, C minor seven and F seven, aren't in the key of D minor. They are non-diatonic, but that's okay because they are the second chord and fifth chord of the key of B flat, and they resolve to a B flat six chord. These 2-5 progressions are really the meat and potatoes of jazz harmony. They're a vehicle for tension and release and create a sense of forward momentum that gets us from one chord to the next. This sequence is rounded out by an E minor 7 flat 5 and an A7, the 2 and 5 chords of the parent key of D minor. If we take a look at how the roots in this progression move on the circle of fifths, we see that, even if we skip around a little bit, things generally cycle stepwise to the left. This is fairly typical of the patterns that are found in jazz harmony. Okay, so now that we have the basics covered, how do we get to level two? Jazz harmony level two, Poblano Pepper. Okay, so now we have a little bit more color, and the way that we got that was through tritone substitution, where we take a dominant seventh chord and replace it with another dominant seventh chord three whole steps away. The tritone sub ends up having two of the same notes of the chord that it's substituting for, the important third and seventh degrees of the chord, which happen to form a tritone. These chords add a fair amount of tension because they're generally non-diatonic, they aren't from the key, like for example this B7 chord. These chords release that tension by resolving down by a half step to a chord that is from the key, like this B flat six chord. A rich vocabulary of seventh chords that create this sense of tension and release is really what this level of jazz harmony is all about. A lot of classic jazz from the 1950s can be said to exist primarily on this harmonic level, like for example, Workin' with the Miles Davis Quintet, or Monin by Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. These artists were deeply influenced by the melodic and harmonic choices of earlier bebop musicians, like for example, Charlie Parker. Parker. A lot of the harmonic vocabulary of this music exists in this level. It is the bread and butter of jazz musicians everywhere. But to quote Miles Davis, if we're going to level up, we have to not play the butter notes. Jazz harmony level three, jalapeno pepper. Alright, so there is definitely some more spice happening here, and the reason for that is jazz harmony often uses what are called extensions. In Western music, we build different kinds of chords by stacking different kinds of thirds on top of one another. This is called tertiary harmony. We can extend chords through chord extensions by overstacking thirds up and up without changing the basic identity of the chord. At the core of it, though, these chord progressions are just colorful versions of the meat and potato 2-5 progressions. They're just dressed up in fancy clothes. Like, for example, this A7 flat 9 sharp 11 flat 13 is just an A7 chord, but like wearing a gaudy hat or something. This level is perfect for big band, where you have a lot of different musicians available to play a lot of different extensions. Artists like, of course, Duke Ellington and later Thad Jones created dense and rich layers of harmony with their orchestras. Now, in order to reach the next level, we kind of have to leave the 2-5 progression behind. We have to move away from the meat and potatoes of jazz harmony and get into something a little crunchier. Jazz harmony level four, Piri Piri Pepper.
Okay, so this was something called a pedal point, where you have the same note that occurs across all the chords in a progression, usually in the bass. This pedal point grounds us in the key of D, and because of that, the chords changing on top don't have to be functional. In other words, they don't have to point to anywhere in particular. They don't have to have that same sense of tension and release. Instead, you can pick and choose basically whatever, so long as it doesn't clash with the melody. A lot of modal jazz from the 1960s existed on this level, especially with the piano playing of McCoy Tyner with John Coltrane on albums like My Favorite Things and A Love Supreme. This sort of style paved the way for the next level of jazz. Jazz Harmony Level 5, Habanero Pepper. Okay, now we're getting spicy. We've now entered the wonderful world of non-functional harmony. At this level, chords don't need to point to any particular key or chord. They just exist as islands rising up from the seabed of harmony, unconnected from one another. For example, if we take a look at the second chord in the progression, D flat major nine, it's not in the key of D minor, nor does it point to any particular key. One way to think about it is that this chord is not the result of any other chord. It exists purely because the melody note C works well with the chord because it's the chord's major seventh. By the time we've reached level five, musicians just aren't formalizing their harmonic choices as much. Instead, they're pretty much relying purely on their experienced ears to guide them with their aesthetic decisions. Now, by the late 1960s, the jazz avant-garde largely abandoned harmony as a guiding principle in composition, but you could still hear level five harmony in albums like Miles Smiles by Miles Davis. These level five albums would greatly influence the harmonic choices of later fusion artists like Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea. So now that we can basically use whatever weird chords we want and call it jazz, where can we possibly go from here? Well, jazz harmony level six, Ghost Pepper. This level is the spiciest of them all. Level six is the land of liberated dissonance. Polychords, mirror harmony, 12-tone harmonizations, basically anything and everything that Arnold Schoenberg and Igor Stravinsky used, now we can use in jazz harmony. So let's take a look at this B flat minor major seven over F major seven over C sharp five. We have three unrelated chords stacked on top of one another, each conflicting in various ways. For example, the G sharp of the C sharp five creates a minor ninth with the A of the F major seven, which in turn creates another minor ninth with the B flat of the B flat minor major seven. These overtones are at war with one another. It's a dramatic and intense moment, and because of that, it should be used quite sparingly. As Ludmila Ulela would write in her book, Contemporary Harmony, this type of musical phrase is so related to the structure of a composition that it cannot be used indiscriminately. So just like ghost peppers, level six jazz harmony should be used extremely rarely and in very small doses. Otherwise it might ruin a perfectly good dish. Examples of level six harmony might be Bob Grettinger's arrangements for the Stan Kenton Orchestra's album, City of Glass, or maybe anything by Dave Liebman. He's a spicy boy. So now we've jumped completely off the deep end. How are we supposed to get to the final level? Oh, Miles Davis, Prince of Darkness, show us the way. Show us how to not play the butter notes. Show us the way to jazz level seven. Jazz harmony level seven. So what is going on here? Well, this is an example of intonalism, where the chords have been tuned to the melody. So the melody has stayed in our normal 12-tone equal tempered system that we all know and love, but the chords have been tuned to just intonation ratios based on the harmonic functions of the melody notes that they're paired with. For example, the G here on this A minor seven is the minor seventh of the chord. Now there are different just intonation ratios that can be used for minor sevenths depending on the context, but this one we use a nine to five ratio. This nine to five ratio happens to be about 18 cents sharp from its equal tempered counterpart. So to compensate, the chord has to be detuned by 18 cents just to make sure that the G of the melody is still an equal temperament. 
That's the basic idea behind the process. We tune the just intonated chords to the equal tempered melody. But some interesting things can happen when we use different ratios for the same interval. For example, we could use 7 to 4 for G on this A7 sharp 9. 7 to 4 is 33 cents flat from its equal tempered counterpart. So we have to tune the whole chord up 33 cents to keep the G of the melody in equal temperament. We think of the roots for both of these chords as A, but because the minor sevenths are defined differently and G stays the same in the melody, the root notes are almost exactly a quarter tone apart. We could say that level 7 jazz harmony is zen harmonic. It exists outside of the realm of our normal 12-tone equal tempered system. These tuning shenanigans are how Jacob Collier, of course, famously modulated to G half sharp major in his arrangement of In the Bleak Midwinter. But other artists like Steve Lehman have experimented with this sort of thing with his spectral compositions. What's interesting is that this harmony can be very subtle, as you heard, in comparison with the bombast of level 6. To me, though, these chords feel like nothing else. They feel like they're almost piercing through at me, rather than laying on this bed, impassive. I'm not really quite sure if that makes any sense, so I'll play you the 12-tone equal-tempered version of these chords back-to-back -back with the intonalist version so that you can hear for yourself. So it might sound a little off, a little out of tune, but in a good way, to me at least. It almost feels like that cassette tape sort of vibe, that lo-fi sort of vibe. In fact, if you slowed it down and just put an anime girl studying on top of it, you'd have lo-fi hip-hop. <laughs> Just intonated chords of Verdilla beats gets us the seventh level of jazz harmony. If you enjoyed this video, check out my Patreon because it's my patrons over at my Patreon that make these videos possible. Thank you so much for watching.